Well, what's up everybody and welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to take a look at this 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee L. This is an altitude 4x4 finished off in bright white and has an MSRP around $54,000. So let's get right into Jeep's three row Grand Cherokee. Underneath the hood of the 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee L, you're gonna find a naturally aspirated 3.6 liter six cylinder motor. This V6 is pumping out 293 horsepower with 257 pound-feet of torque, sending the power through an eight-speed automatic transmission, and of course, this is a four-wheel drive vehicle. Kerr weight is around 4,658 pounds, and it runs on a 23-gallon fuel tank, so you can expect 18 miles per gallon in the city with 25 out on the highway, and this SUV can even tow 6,200 pounds. Overall length is 204.9 inches, with a wheelbase at 121.7, Width is 77.9 and height is 71.5 inches. For some off-road capabilities, the Grand Cherokee L's approach angle is 21 degrees, breakover angle is 18 degrees, ground clearance is 10.8 inches, and then departure angle is 22 degrees. And then now moving on to the exterior styling with this 2023 Grand Cherokee. This is a super nice look, especially being in altitude with all the blacked out accents. You can see the LED headlights with LED daytime running lights, all blacked out, and it blends really nicely to the upper grill. You're gonna see the traditional seven slots up in this grill with gloss black surrounding everything. You can see the nice mesh design as well to allow a ton of cooling. Down below, we get a little bit of plastic black and then more mesh with openings, and then even more gloss black trim in the lower portion of this front bumper. Get some trim on the farthest side and pretty nice body lines surrounding it it definitely has a very nice Jeep aspect. You can see the Jeep name written out in gloss black, and then some sharp body lines throughout the hood fading their way towards that windshield. Overall, the front end has a really nice design with some good design cues that make it stand out as a Jeep. At the side, you're gonna see these 20 inch five spoke wheels finished off in gloss black, really filling out the fender arch nicely. Get some plastic black throughout the fender, and then one sharp body line cutting through the entire side profile. We get Grand Cherokee written out on the door along with an American flag and then more sharp body lines throughout the lower portion of these doors. There's more plastic black throughout the side and you can see how it fades all the way to the rear fender. We do have a set of body color door handles and gloss black mirror caps with an LED turn signal all integrated. And there's all gloss black trim surrounding these windows. You can also see the sunroof up on top, black roof rails, and I like how the trim around the windows even cuts through the rear end. The side profile of the Grand Cherokee L, this is a little bit longer than the traditional Grand Cherokee, which will not feature a three row. However, this one with the three row still looks very nice, great proportions all around. I think they've designed it really nicely to still have a sporty look. You can see the sharp line cutting towards these taillights have a really nice three dimensional look and they are sunken into the bodywork well. And you can see how they have a smoked out design. We get blacked out Jeep, more black trim surrounding the rear window, along with the integrated spoiler up on top with that third brake light, be your L and 4x4 badge on the left, and then sharp lines throughout the rear bumper. You have all of your parking sensors back here, be placed in the center, you can pop off to get to that trailer hitch, and overall the rear end comes together nicely to fit the whole look of this car. Taking a look at the key fob, we get lock, unlock, remote start, and the tailgate, and then Jeep on the backside. Going ahead and locking the SUV, it does have a smart key to where you can just grab the door handle and automatically unlock. This does feature the global black leather interior with Alcantara inserts. Pretty nice design overall with a little bit of black and silver accents throughout. We get a full black door panel. Got some plastic up on here with a cool texture, your aluminum colored release handle, all of your window controls, mirror controls, lock and unlock, a nice size grab handle, as well as a padded armrest. You can see the white contrast stitching, speaker down below, and a ton of storage space down below the door. And then moving towards the interior, you can see all of your power controls for the driver's seat on the left side. And then a nice combination of the smooth leather with contrast stitching, and then perforated Alcantara throughout the insert. Really nice seat overall, just a nice simple design with a good use of materials. And then we get a black leather steering wheel with some silver trim and contrast stitching. And then now inside the Grand Cherokee, keeping my foot on the brake, we can go ahead and fire it up. Both screens are gonna roar to life. You can take a look at the full digital instrument cluster with your tack on the left side, speedometer on the right, you get a little bit of information in the center. 
Now, if we do toggle some of the buttons on the left side or any of the cruise control buttons, you can go through a few different items within the screen. So I can scroll down and you're gonna see how everything moves out of the way. And now I can scroll left and right and see all sorts of different vitals within the car. Continuing down, we have some trip information. Audio information will come up as well. And then you can continue scrolling down. You can see back to the main screen now where you can scroll left and right, see adaptive cruise control. So you get a pretty good amount of information for the screen. Taking a look at the steering wheel now, of course you have those cruise control settings on the right with your adaptive cruise. There are some paddle shifters on the top, all of your controls for the windshield wipers, and then turn signal stock on the left side. We can also see on the far left side, we have headlight controls, interior dimming, and then an air vent with some cool trim underneath that, some leather material. We get a plastic material across the entire dashboard, and then more of the leather and stitching, and then this gray and silver trim. Up on top, we have your two center air vents. We also have the auto start stop, lane keeping assist and traction control, parking sensors, and then your sport mode icon. If we do toggle that, it'll come up on the screen with a little checkered flag as you go into the two drive modes. Moving to the center now, the infotainment screen, there are a few shortcuts up on top. We can toggle this right here and get a shortcut to heated seats and steering wheel along with your temperature. And then going back to the main screen, we can see all the climate controls that will come up as well in a full screen design, all of your fan speed and everything like that. We have a home icon as well where you can adjust this to see what you want. Then we have media controls, phone integration. And then if we go under vehicle, you're gonna see all sorts of different settings within the car. Quite a few things are gonna pop up on this far right side that you can easily scroll up and down. You can also categorize it on this left side. We have controls up here. You're able to take a look at that rear view backup camera. Of course, exit out of there, screen off. The third row, you can easily toggle that button and easily get those to go back down. And then we have apps on the far right side that will pop up and you're able to really customize what you'd like in your car. Underneath the screen now, we do get some physical controls for climb, which is nice. You don't always have to rely on the screen. You, of course, can toggle everything using the buttons down here. We have fan speed. We also have your temperature, volume on the left, tuning on the right, heated steering wheel and heated seats, and then all of your different zones and air conditioning are down below that. Now in the center, you're gonna see all this nice piano black. And if we go ahead and just push this up, we have quite a few USBs and plugs, wireless phone charging along with just storage. And then in the center, we have our rotary dial for the gear select. You can see cup holders in the center and then more of this black leather material with stitching. And if we open this up, we have a nice amount of storage. And then if we grab the lower lever, we have even more storage underneath all this. If we take a look at the glove box now, pretty good amount of storage space in there as you would expect. And then one last look at the new Grand Cherokee. Pretty nice design overall, it's pretty easy to use. And for a more mid-level trim, this is a pretty nicely specced vehicle with a pretty decent use of materials. We get a black headliner, manual sunshade right in the center for that sunroof, your power liftgate control, dome lights and sunroof controls themselves. And then we even get storage up here for sunglasses and then a nice mirror. And then now moving on to the rear seat space, if we grab the door handle and open it up, door panel's finished off just like we saw up front, and you're gonna see all the same materials back in here. Now this is gonna have the second row give you captain's chairs. You even do have armrests that are gonna fold down for a little bit extra comfort. We have some storage down below along with two cup holders, quite a few plugs, you have air vents, and even some temperature controls for the fan speed and a little screen. There is storage on the back side of these seats as well. And then if you go ahead and just grab this lever, we can pull this whole seat out of the way to make it super easy and convenient to get into this third row. Third row seats two people. Those are those headrests that'll pop down with that button. Same materials back here. You can even see plugs, armrests, and cup holders. And then sitting now in the back in this third row, it's really not all too bad. Now if I go ahead and grab this seat, Pull it back to where it was at five foot 11. I'm actually sitting back here with pretty good room. I have a couple inches of headroom and even leg room isn't too bad. Of course, you can extend your leg throughout the center a little bit if you need to, but we do have some amenities like climate vents over here, a few USB ports. So really not all too bad. The seats are kind of low. So my legs are kind of up high a little bit in my chest. However, in a pinch, really not that bad, especially for a smaller child or something. Really not too bad of a third row seat. And I like with the captain's chairs, there's enough room to actually just climb through the center and enter that second row. So if we now take a look at the second row seat, uh, we have levers on the left side, manual of course, to go ahead and recline and everything. And once again, pretty good headroom. You got your grab handles, dome lights up on top, 
armrests are in a good place, and we have a lever in front. We can slide this forwards and back. So a pretty good family SUV, honestly. If you're looking for a three row vehicle, but you don't want a giant Wagoneer or something crazy big, this seems like a pretty good sized vehicle. Useful second row, useful third row, really can't complain. And now if I go ahead and double tap the button on the key fob, we'll pop open the lift gate. Now with the third row seat up, you can see how there's actually a pretty good amount of storage behind these seats. You know, you can do some grocery shopping and actually fit some good items here. We can grab the floor. There is a little bit of hidden storage space and then you can see how those headrests are gonna look. Now there's cubbies on the left side as well as the right. You're also gonna see a plug over on that right side. Then if you go ahead and grab this centerpiece, that'll pull the headrest down and then you can get these seats out of the way. So all manual control, which really isn't all too hard. And you can get a good idea if you have the second row up, the kind of storage space you're gonna get in the cargo area. And then with the second row fully down, you can see what kind of space you're gonna get using this fully as storage. So overall, pretty practical SUV. Then the button over here, just tap that. A Couple seconds later, it's gonna automatically close down. And overall, pretty good size vehicle. All right, guys, so we are setting off now in the Grand Cherokee. I will say the V6, if you're flooring it a little bit, that was just half throttle, it does seem to use the whole engine, which can kind of make it feel like it's struggling a little bit. I think the 4XE, or if you can get the V8, I think those are a little bit better if you are planning to floor it a little bit. Normal driving seems like it has pretty good normal power. However, it'll definitely wind out the engine just a little bit. So as far as some normal things, visibility in it, you have a huge windshield, really easy to see out. The side mirrors are huge as well, same with the center. So you have a really good view around. Only thing I notice, the mirrors themselves are kind of close to the bodywork to where you can't really see through the mirror. So slow speed, if you're making tight turns, it's kind of hard to see what's going on right down there. So I wouldn't mind if those were maybe poked out a little bit, give us a bigger gap right there. Overall though, not too bad. Over your right and left shoulder, pretty good as you would expect. And of course with the third row down or headrest down at least, you know, you have a really good view. Now when you are taking some turns and everything, it's a pretty smooth driving car. It takes turns well, feels very confident to drive. Doesn't feel like it's all over the place, crazy body roll or anything like that. It's got a good soft suspension that absorbs bumps, but also gives you a planted ride. The seats themselves are really comfortable too. A lot of good ways to adjust them and everything to honestly just feel pretty comfortable in this. Armrests are in a great place. This is just a pretty good family SUV. I could see just driving this hours and hours, you know, going on long trips, things like that, daily driving, commute, stuff like that. Really not gonna be an issue. It seems pretty comfortable. Use of materials is pretty good. You know, there are some cheap plastics up here, which I wouldn't mind. A little bit nicer uh, upper area for being $54,000. Wouldn't mind this also being leather to match this, even though it is synthetic leather. But I wouldn't mind just that section being a little nicer. Everything else looks and feels as you would expect. So I think overall it's a pretty good um, designed interior, good fit and finish, good use of materials and stuff like that. And the driving is really nice. You know, the brakes work, you have good stability in it. Of course you have the towing and pretty decent off-road capabilities even for this particular spec, which isn't anything crazy. Of course you can opt for an overland, have the adjustable suspension, drive modes, you know, all those other things. This one's basically just like a full-time all-wheel drive system where it's gonna engage it when needed. Hitting a bump now. <laughs> Once again, very solid SUV. There's no loose ends, nothing like rattling or falling apart or anything. It feels like a pretty well-built solid SUV. And I think it's just something you can drive effortlessly and it doesn't feel all too big. Like I mentioned, being a three row vehicle, it's not a Wagoneer, which is a very big SUV. This is super manageable if you're coming from even a car or something. This can be something you can get used to super easily and you just don't feel like you're in anything big. So spinning around to my honest thoughts of what it's like being behind the wheel of this. I've driven this for like five or six days straight now. Quite honestly, it's got a pretty decent fuel range because I've only used a quarter tank of gas and I've driven quite a lot in it. So it seems like something you can drive and just kind of drive and not worry about filling up and be pretty comfortable. I haven't really had issues with just enjoying being in the car. It's something that you can just put miles on. It's just a pretty solid car. Hitting those train tracks, you know, some cars, that hurts going over. This really can take it. So it's a tough SUV that can handle just the day-to-day, -day, everything you're gonna do with it. It's got the space without feeling too big. 
that's something that I like. You know, if I ever need a three row SUV one day, I don't really want to get a Wagoneer sized SUV. It's just too big, doesn't fit in my garage, it's just too big to deal with. My wife doesn't like them at all. Uh, so for us, you know, it's not something we'd like. This SUV seems like something doable. Both my wife and I have been in it for a couple days and she doesn't mind being in it at all. It feels like it's small enough to feel tossable and kind of athletic driving, but big enough to actually have the usable space. So it's a pretty well-rounded vehicle. My only real complaints, the mirrors, like I mentioned, there needs to be a little bit more of a gap because slow speed, when I'm making like a left turn, you just can't really see what's going on right there. So I wouldn't mind something a little bit different, just maybe thinner mirrors or poking them out a little bit. And then the engine, the V6, in my opinion, is decent. You know, normal driving is fine to get up to speed. However, if you gotta go up a steep hill or floor it a little bit, it just seems to like redline a little bit from slow speeds. So I'm not the biggest fan of just a naturally aspirated V6. I feel like in today's world, that's honestly getting a little dated in technology. I would probably opt for the 4XE to get that electric assist down low to give you better torque to where you don't have to stress the engine redlining it all the time. So personally, I would kind of like that better or even the V8 and maybe they'll put the inline six turbo in this one day, which would be a really cool option. So I'm more into you know something with a little bit better pep to its step. Normal people probably aren't gonna have an issue. It seems like a pretty fine power plant for just normal driving, but I could see it being a little bit quicker. Like right there, downshifted, and it's almost redlining it, and I'm barely giving it some gas. So I'd like a little bit more power out of the car. Aside from that, you know, the piano black here, it looks great when it's clean. However, a couple days later, we got some fingerprints, we got some dust on it already. Obviously, it's gonna take some to keep clean. And I wouldn't mind if this plastic wasn't plastic, just because for $54,000, you know, there are some other competitors that will at least put the synthetic material on this area just to make it a little bit nicer. Now, with the Grand Cherokee, there are so many trim levels, you can get them super nice or super basic. So they really do have, you know, a Grand Cherokee for kind of anyone's budget, I would say. Uh, I just wouldn't mind for this one, the altitude, give you just a little bit extra on the interior. So overall, I think it's a fine vehicle, the Grand Cherokee in general, whether it's the normal one or the L, I think you really do have a good spectrum of trim levels and options to pick from. And of course, different styles, different features to make it really your own. But overall, it's a pretty solid SUV. If you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned for plenty more content, and I'll see you all in the next video. Hey, 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 hey.